Hello everyone, my name is Sergei Harinsov and today I'm going to tell you about a result recently obtained in our laboratory quantum photonics and metamaterials of Kazan Federal University. I'm talking about electron-photon interaction in a system moving from order to disorder. Why is it so important? Because this knowledge allow one to only to enrich but also significantly change our perception of nature of light-matter interaction. 100 years ago, in 1923, an American physicist Arthur Compton for the first time demonstrated the existence of momentum of an X-ray photon scattered by a free electron in metal and was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1927. This effect was possible due to the electron-photon momentum matching. The wavelength of both was approximately equal to 10 nanometers. Later, in 1928, an Indian physicist Raman attempted to observe Compton scattering of sunlight. Unfortunately, this experiment failed due to electron-photon momentum mismatching, estimated to be 2 3 order in magnitude. However, he also observed secondary inelastic scattering in liquid and gas, the nature of which turned out to be different, and was named after Sir Raman as Raman effect, and was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930. The heart of this phenomenon is a modulation of incident radiation by molecular vibration of a medium. So, is it possible to observe Compton scattering of visible radiation? Our findings answer this question unambiguously. Yes, it is. Unlike photonics, where the photon momentum is determined by, by the wavelength of light. In nanophotonics, the photon momentum is governed by a special confinement. For example, an atomic scale protrusion. A strong mismatching of photon and electron momentum makes the interaction negligible. In order to overcome this difficulty, they suggested using a new paradigm in photonics, an optical nanoantenna that, according to the Matryoshka principle, provides a cascaded multiplicative optical field enhancement. In most cases, plasmonic nanostructure are used to solve this problem, which absorbs the light ideally at the plasmon resonance. A special localization of a near-field photon is limited to the size of the plasmonic nanostructure and must exceed 5-10 nanometer. This is the special resolution that is achievable in terse microscopy. Obviously, the best localization of light can be achieved by using one atom. Such a regime is often referred to as the lightning rod effect. For doing that, Professor Lukas Navotny suggested using a self-similar nanoantenna allowing the cascading mechanism of enhancement and confinement of an optical field. It is precisely this physical principle aimed at the enhancement of the electron-photon interaction that underlies the unprecedented optical super-resolution Wavelength divided by 1000, achieved by Dong and Apkarian. It is interesting to note that no attention was paid to the advent of broadband emission in their works. And still, what role does the optical nanoantenna play in semiconductor photonics? There are no perfect crystals in nature, and therefore, the lattices are distorted with the facts, vacancies, other atoms, interstitial, etc., which introduce static disorder into the system. A question is being raised, and whether disorder or chaos can play a positive role for improving electron and optical properties of solids. Transforming a crystal into a disordered state, or in glass, creates a huge amount of multi-scale structures. Each of them can fun function as an optical nanoantenna. I would like to 
Remind that amorphous silicon absorbs the light 30 times better than crystalline one. So this means that glass can be used for generating confined photons. Defects in semiconductors underline the excess electron levels within the forbidden gap, forming the so-called electronic continuum, often referred to as uh, the Orbach bridge. The Arbok states can lead to extraordinary spectroscopic features of solids, which will be discussed below. Another mechanism is thermal and charge fluctuations, leading to additional lattice imperfection or dynamical disorder. This effect was theoretically and experimentally studied in 2017 by Lewis Bruce, who has been recently awarded the Nobel Prize for discovery of quantum dots. Can one observe disorder in materials using optical spectroscopy? In 1987, Henrik Kriegsmann observed for the first time a broadband emission from quartz, the spectral position of which was dependent on the pumping wavelength. And this is a signature of Raman scattering. In his paper, Chrisman explained this effect using a giant polarizability of hydrogen bonds. Later, in 1989, Anatoly Malshukov succeeded to observe a similar phenomenon using metallic nanostructures, namely rough silver thin films, and develop a physical model to explain this effect. In the frameworks, of his theory, the broadband emission originated from inelastic light scattering by fluctuation of density of single electron states nearby the surface defect sites in the vicinity of the Fermi level. This phenomenon has been long overlooked by the scientific community. However, since the advent of terse microscopy in 2000, researchers around the world began to pay attention to the broadband emission from a metallic nanoparticles, initially interpreted as photoluminescence due to undirect optical transitions. Later, this phenomenon was interpreted by Baumberg as electronic Raman scattering. As you can see on the spectra on the right, being ran for the first time demonstrated a proof of concept to control electronic Raman scattering through varying roughness using anodic oxidation. Unlike conventional vibrational Raman scattering, in this process the initial and final electronic states are different. Besides illuminating such a system with confined visible photons, the electron momentum can be changed and this leads to indirect optical transition. In our work, we have demonstrated for the first time electronic Raman scattering in semiconductor glasses, which is caused by the momentum of confined photon. For this purpose, we use heterogeneous amorphous and crystalline matrix of silicon or germanium. Upon laser illumination, we observe low and high energy electronic Raman scattering, depending on the size of structural units. This indicates the fact that this emission can be governed by structural disorder. When the solid proof is on the onset of the heavy tail of the secondary emission, extended up to 7,000 reverse centimeter, and it corresponds to one electron volt. Another solid proof is single photon anti-stocks and stocks photoluminescence under subband pumping. Besides silicon and germanium, we succeeded to observe this effect in other disordered materials such as titanium nitride, fluoride, pyrovskite, chalcogenides, and high entropy crystals. One should emphasize that electronic Raman scattering in nanosized metals is manifested as a single broadband emission, whereas two broadband emissions are observed in semiconductor glasses. The low energy band is positioned at the vicinity of the pumping wavelength. The other is redshifted due to the size effect and interpreted as 
Compton scattering of visible radiation. Our findings indicate that we are approaching the edge of new scientific field associated with the development of spectroscopic method of structural analysis based on electronic Raman scattering. This method can be used not only to probe such disordered materials as glass, ceramics, amorphous or porous materials, but for 3D reconstruction of the live system, for example, proteins at room temperature. In fact, we add an additional axis named momentum. In optoelectronics, semiconductor glasses will allow to boost the quantum yield of photoluminescence and photodetection threshold. Besides, we are confident that these materials will be used for developing white LEDs and defect states tunable lasers. Another breakthrough is related to laser cooling of disordered semiconductors down to cryogenic temperature due to strong electron photon coupling. Dynamical disorder in semiconductor glasses leads to low frequency electronic Raman scattering that is very sensitive to temperature. Therefore, using this principle, one can build up a temperature sensor based on Orbach energy measurement. We are anticipating a considerable progress in photovoltaics due to designing heterogeneous semiconductor glasses in solar cells, including Seebeck effect. Along with Compton scattering, recently Professor Ida Kaminer experimentally observed Cherenkov effect using free electrons due to electron-photon interaction. Finally, the most intriguing achievement is the generation of matter from vacuum or the transformation of electromagnetic field into matter and antimatter. When two gamma quanta, when they collide, generate an electron-positron pair. These works open unprecedented opportunities in energy industry by direct extracting colossal energy mc squared from a matter by analogy to extracting energy through nuclear fission mechanism in radioactive materials. And this led to the development of nuclear industry. Summing up, I would like to highlight that disorder in any system uh, normally perceived as a negative factor becomes a driver for developing high technologies in which order appears from chaos. In solids, disorder favors electron photon momentum matching and therefore results in enhanced light matter interaction. This means that the localization of a photon can be used for observing Compton scattering of visible radiation in disordered sol solids. I would like to thank all co authors of our paper recently published in SES Nano. And thank you for watching and see you. Bye.